This is Brian Mazik, the hardest working man in sports and gaming, and you are listening to my man Conrad Cushman and everything pro wrestling. Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, and we are going to give you guys a little preview and predictions for what we know for Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor. This event will be taking place Saturday, July 23rd in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, you, it's going to be available to watch on Pay-Per-View, Fight TV, and Bleacher Report. Uh, They've got a pretty good card coming up for all of this, so I would highly recommend people who are longtime Ring of Honor fans um, to give it a chance, get back into it, and if you're an AEW fan, I think you're going to enjoy this one as well. Um, Should be really, really fun. So first, we have the Zero Hour pre-show, and it's been announced that it will be Allison K of the NWA versus Willow Nightingale. Uh, Willow is someone who I've been advocating for for a long, long time to get signed by AEW, and I hope that this is going to lead to the eventual signing of both. Uh, we've seen Allison K also do some work for AEW in the past. Um, it's on the pre-show. This could go a lot of different ways, but I think in this one, you're going to give the win to Willow Nightingale. I think Willow is going to be the future for the Ring of Honor brand. And I could definitely see her fitting in perfectly with what they're trying to set up. Willow just has such a bubbly personality. And I think we can see some really good things from her. I don't know what Allison K's status is with the NWA. NWA released a bunch of tweets today like that just confused me uh, with everything that's going on over there. And I think it was designed on purpose to get people talking about the NWA. But, but. We could, uh, we could really hope for uh, a good match, and I would like for them to showcase what the future of Ring of Honor is bringing in the Zero Hour pre-show. So give me Willow Nightingale for the win here. Next up, shockingly announced last night on our AEW Dynamite Live review, um, we found out that the ROH Six-Man Tag Team Championships are back. Everybody's been wondering, where's AEW's trios titles? And we haven't really found the right um, time to introduce them. It feels like Tony's been holding off. And I thought, well, maybe they're just going to get rid of the ROH six-man titles and then those belts could go in between both brands. And I was on the media call today, and it sounds like Tony's going to keep the championship separate for both brands. So I'm predicting that the Ring of Honor six-man tag team titles are going to uh, be back in, in full force here. But... What's going to happen with them? We have the Righteous uh, containing Vincent, Bateman, and Dutch going up against Dalton Castle and the boys. So if you guys have been watching me, I've been appearing on the Insiders podcast. Uh, Shout out to them. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. And congrats on them getting 3K uh, subs recently. We've, we've seen Vincent in Honor No More, and this is what led me to believe, okay, the ROH six-man titles have to be gone, right? It looks like I was wrong because they're going to be defended here, and I think we're going to see Dalton Castle and the boys get them. Why do I think that? Going back to the last Battle of the Belts, I thought Dalton Castle's entrance, I thought the way he presented himself in front of the AEW crowd, I thought everything looked great. And I think that that was a big plus sign for him. And I think they're going to get the nod here. And the boys, 
Um, they've been competing for a long time in pro wrestling. I've seen them in WWE, I believe NXT. I've seen them everywhere, uh, just trying to get some work in. And I think it's time. I think it's time that we put the six-man tag team straps on Dalton Castle and the boys. I think they've just earned it. The gimmick, the look, it all fits, and it just works when you put them all together. So give me that ROH six-man tag team championship match and put it on Dalton Castle and the boys. Next up, we have the ROH Pure Championship match, which has Buffalo Zone, shout out to the hometown guy, Daniel Garcia versus Wheeler, Utah. Now listen, I don't know if I've ever told you guys to go out and watch a match from the independents, but I've mentioned it several times on the Dynamite live streams. Check us out on YouTube, Everything Pro Wrestling. Daniel Garcia and Wheeler, Utah have had bangers on the indie scene. If you have not seen their match on IWTV 100, go and type that in on YouTube after this and watch that match if you want a preview of what we're going to get. Now, the rules for this matchup are different. The pure championship uh, rules, the pure rules that they have in Ring of Honor add something different to the match. And once again, Tony Khan on the media call today had confirmed that we are going to get the graphics back for it. I like that. It makes it easier to follow. It helps me explain it to people. What are the pure rules? What are we doing with that? So kudos to Tony on that. Daniel Garcia, hell of a wrestler. Wheeler Yuta, hell of a wrestler. I've been wondering, I, I felt like from Tony's answer today, we really don't know who's going where or what's staying. But with the pure championship with Daniel Garcia and Wheeler Yuta, this could go either way. Both of these guys are in factions. Daniel Garcia, a member of the Jericho Appreciation Society, and we have Wheeler Yuta, who was part of the Blackpool Combat Club. Both fit so well with what they're trying to do. I don't know, man. This one's a coin flip, and I think there's several matches on this card that I could see or catch myself saying it's a coin flip. Um, In this one... I don't know. I really, really like what we have here. I'm going to be bold, though. My, my heart's telling me one thing and my mind's telling me something else, but I'm going to go with my mind right now. I'm going to say that the ROH Pure title will change hands and Daniel Garcia is going to win the title here. And it'll go over to the JAS and he'll have some hardware to walk around with uh, while he's going around with Jericho. And I think it's going to be done in a a cunning conniving kind of way because that's who daniel garcia is hanging out with jericho but i think we're in treat for a match that could steal the show potentially so this is my prediction for a sleeper match right here next up we have the roh women's world championship match serena deeb versus the champion mercedes martinez oh <sighs> So Serena Deeb is someone who I've been advocating for for a long time that I think she should be AEW Women's Champion. She should have been TBS Women's Champion. And now she's getting a shot at the Ring of Honor Women's Championship match. We all know behind the scenes, Serena Deeb is a player coach. She is helping everyone put their matches together and put things along. But Serena Deeb is the one who is um, still competing and holding it down for the company in a player role as well wrestling in the ring weekly and competing mercedes martinez new champion do they do they run the risk of taking the championship belt off of mercedes martinez right now my so this is another one my heart's telling me i want serena deeb as the ring of honor world champion if it was up to me i think i would go with deeb to put the title on but i just don't see them taking uh, the championship off of Mercedes. They She just got it not too long ago at that last Battle of the Belts. Um, actually, no, not Battle of the Belts. Uh, when she faced off with Deanna Perrazzo on Dynamite, excuse me, in the main event. I'm going to stick with Mercedes Martinez to retain here. Like I said, lots of coin flips on this one. You could you could uh, argue who should win it, and nobody would nobody would be mad. I'm going to skip this next match that they have written down here on Wrestling Inc. Shout out to them. Credits in the description if you guys want to see the full rundown of what I'm looking at. Let's get to the ROH World Television Championship match. 
as this one's got some history to it, if you're not familiar with Ring of Honor, we have Samoa Joe, the champion, versus Jay Lethal. And Jay Lethal has been accompanied by Satnam Singh and Sanjay Dutt. And they've kind of formed a little bit of an alliance together here. And uh, they're going up against Joe. Now, we have to go all the way back here before we start talking about this one. And we're going to have to rewind it back real quick to discuss some of the past with Jay Lethal and Samoa Joe. For those who don't know, Jay Lethal and Samoa Joe uh, had a relationship in Ring of Honor in its early days. Jay Lethal was the protege to Samoa Joe. And if you look back, even in his early TNA days, they wore similar tights. They both had the tights, the two-tone tights, and they walked around uh, doing their thing. And Lethal was the young guy at the time back then. And I was a big fan. I love Jay Lethal. I thought he did a lot of good stuff here. And he was the protege. He was kind of the opening match kind of guy while Samoa Joe was the Ring of Honor champion. And he was also the pure champion, I believe, at one point. Samoa Joe was just that dude in Ring of Honor. Like, people absolutely love the dude. Has great bouts. One of my favorite matches of all time, Samoa Joe, CM Punk 2. Absolutely stunning, amazing. I have the DVD sitting behind me, and it's one of the reasons that I loved Ring of Honor at the time. Fast forward now. Jay Lethal is one of the longest reigning television champions. Jay Lethal was helping Ring of Honor when nobody else was around. Jay Lethal put the company on his back, and he followed in his protege's footsteps. But now they're both older, wiser, and they're going to compete against each other for the television championship. Now, what do I see happening here? Um, I'm going to go out on the limb once again, and I am predicting and new world television champion Jay Lethal. I think Jay Lethal is going to find a way to become the television champion here. Um, and the only reason I'm saying that is I believe Samoa Joe is destined to like have matches on Dynamite. I think you're going to want him competing against guys like Punk, Brian. I would love to see a triple threat match with all three of them, actually. That is something I would love to see for like the full gear main event, if it's possible, or Revolution. If Punk's ready by then, Punk, Joe, and Dick. Da- Brian Danielson, bro, I can't even get the words out. Like, it would be unbelievable to see those three in a triple threat match. And I think they could do some real damage in that ring and just put on a real slug fest. Like, I, I don't know. I think that would be a lot of fun. You get technical wrestling. You get brawling, submissions. They have it all. And I would love to see them get the opportunity to put that on. But I think Jay Lethal should be rewarded here. Jay Lethal has always stayed with Ring of Honor no matter what. And he was trying to um, help put the company through the difficult times even. He stayed there. He helped form the foundation with Gresham. He did a lot of stuff for them. So I think Jay Lethal deserves a little bit of a reward. Let him walk around with a championship belt here and let him help um, lead Ring of Honor into this new era that they're going into with Tony Khan uh, leading them. So Jay Lethal for the win. Next up, we have the ROH World Championship match. We are going to have Claudio Castagnoli, formerly known as Cesaro, versus Jonathan Gresham. Tough, tough, tough. So the storyline here is that Cesaro, a.k.a. Claudio, um, Claudio has never been world champion anywhere that he's been. And that's kind of true. He's kind of always had the brass ring elude him. And he hasn't been able to do it. And Jonathan Gresham is the guy when the odds are stacked up against him, he has come through. He has delivered. He put on a great match with Bandito at the last ROH event. Can Jonathan Gresham do it again? He he led the foundation. He held it down. And he became a big deal. But recently, he's joined Tully Blanchard Enterprises. And I think we're going to see them on action on this card as well. But... What are we going to do here? Because I thought it was weird that Brian Cage, who seemed like Tully's main guy, all of a sudden they add Jonathan Gresham, and now things have changed a little bit. Brian Cage and uh, Gresham, part of the same group with the uh, Gates of Agony? I don't, I don't know what they're doing here. So in my opinion, Claudio's got the hot hand right now. This dude came in. He was the replacement for uh, to face Zack Sabre Jr. when Brian Danielson couldn't do it. I was so sad for Danielson once that couldn't happen, but Claudio was a great pick. Now, Claudio 
has the opportunity to right his wrong in this storyline. And I think he's someone who could carry the ROH uh, banner with Yuta. Blackpool Combat Club may get split up because of the two rosters that they're going to have here with AEW and Ring of Honor. But Tony also said that some people would make sense to go back and forth. Claudio, Samoa Joe. FTR, like a lot, Garcia, Yuta, a lot of these guys make sense in that role that we were talking about from the media call that the mention I just brought up with Tony Khan. Those guys that I could all see going back and forth. Hell, even a Gresham and Jay Lethal. And I would love to even see the foundation reform. But right now, Tully Blanchard Enterprises, Jay Lethal's got his crew. It seems like things are being done differently here. I am going to say Claudio Castagnoli dethrones Jonathan Gresham for the uh, Ring of Honor World Championship. And I don't know if new titles are going to be made with the new logo on it, but that's something I think things to consider for the future. Now, for the main event, we have a, well, what's the main event in my eyes? Because they had match of the year last time, and I get why they didn't go on last, because the Briscoes also had to go do a match for Impact Wrestling. And it was all the setup, and they kind of had to work it out with each other because they were using people from both companies. Hey, can you travel here? Can you do this? And it was all during Mania weekend. Now, two out of three falls, ROH World Tag Team title match, the Briscoes versus the FTR, two. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. If they can deliver like they did last time, we are going to see a fight break out. Um, I obviously think this is going to three falls. Not often when there's a two out of three falls match do you see someone take two falls back to back and just get the win. Now, could there be some shenanigans within all of this? I could see it. I could see it. Um, Does it mean that the Young Bucks will interfere? At one point I thought that. I thought we could see the Young Bucks interfere and maybe we get like FTR and a returning CM Punk versus... The Young Bucks and maybe Kenny, maybe Hangman, maybe they could do something like that. But I think the dynamics have changed now. FTR are also the AEW uh, number one contenders for those titles. And I really want to see them win. But we found out on the media call today that Tony Khan has signed the Briscoes exclusively to Ring of Honor for a long-term contract with them. And I love that decision. I love seeing the Briscoes, Jay Lethal, Joe... Claudio, I love seeing all these guys show back up over here so that they can do what they're going to do. It, it just feels right because they always were with Ring of Honor. Um, in this one, I feel like they could have the Briscoes win, but I want to see FTR. I need that Ultimo Dragon picture with them holding all the belts. That would solidify them as the greatest tag team possibly of all time. Um, They're going to be up there on my list for sure. And they've been moving up steadily since NXT. Um, FTR, they're just just a great tag team. And I love what they've done. And I'm loving that they're in AEW. Like, it just fit like a glove. So I'm going to say that FTR retain here. If you guys have your predictions for this show, send them over to me on Twitter, at EPW Show. Uh, You can also check out our Facebook group, Everything Pro Wrestling Group. Uh, Put that in on Facebook. Join some of the conversations we have in there. We have live threads for the pay-per-views. Come on in. Come talk some pro wrestling with us. And I appreciate everybody who took the time to check out this preview and predictions for Ring of Honor. Uh, Tomorrow at 6.05, we will have an upload. Me and Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, my man Sean Hubbard, did a career retrospective on Ric Flair. This will be part one. And then on Monday, the 25th, I believe, we are going to have part two go up. And we're going to talk about the later half of Ric Flair's career. Lots to get into when it comes to that, good and bad. But we got you guys covered once it's time to talk about the Nature Boy Ric Flair. ROH, we will have you covered. I may even do a review, but it'll probably be audio exclusive once again for this channel. So if you like that, tell your friends. And I will try to make sure that we get this up for you guys as soon as possible. But, hey, I appreciate you guys checking this out. And I'm going to let Monteezy take us out of here with uh, the exclusive Everything Pro Wrestling song. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Enjoy. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. 
let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many in this can understand, uh, this the podcast to show you who I am, uh, Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans, uh, please listen every day to the showcase, the opinions and knowledge that anyone can take, showing you how it is done, proving I am number one, what a legend becomes, this is now my time to show you that I am here, uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear, uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you, listen to the podcast here for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinion and the lesson, yes, everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you, listen to the podcast for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinions, the lesson, yes.